everybody. Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday. I'm your host, Antoine Maxwell, for Antoine Maxwell Photography. Uh, so this week is episode two, and this week we're going to discuss how to remove the dirt and grime from the bottom of your seamless paper or whatever kind of floor you're using to uh, make it look a little more cleaner. Um, in this photo, this is a photo that I took uh, earlier this year uh, for uh, my friend Julian Woodhouse, uh, who's a designer um, based out of New York City, but he lives here in Korea. And this was his uh, first lookbook that we did uh, for his clothing. So uh, I chose this photo because it's the only photo that I can think of uh, that kind of had a lot of um, marks and, and, and dirt on it um, that can actually show you a lot better. Um, so we're going to start out with the raw file. Um, I'm not going to retouch the image. I'm just going to just focus on the floor and the background to kind of even it up a little bit more. Um, so let's get right into it. All right. So we're going to start out. We really don't care about the, the settings for the raw file because we just want to focus on just the floor, um, not really texture the skin or retouching um, just the floor. So we're going to open the object and we're going to flatten the image out um, so we can actually work on it. All right, so I'm going to duplicate the layer uh, with Command J. And what we're going to start with is we're going to start out with just trying to selecting only the background um, layer. And this is typically what I do to make the floor a little bit easier. It's a lot quicker uh, than um, going on and using the healing blush or the clone stamp. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a selection. So we're going to come here to the magic wand and we're going to try the magic wand and we're going to try the quick selection and we're going to try this other method that I usually um, use too just to give you a, a variety of, of, of options here. So we're going to do a selection of just around him and see how well uh, this tool works. And I might end up using um, some of these tools uh, in conjunction with each other. So let's go to the quick selection tool and try to pick out some of these spots here. I'm using a Wacom tablet, which makes it a lot easier to do what I'm doing. Um, also, to uh, when I make my brush size bigger, I'm using the bracket to, um, the bracket keys, uh, which is right underneath the delete plus and minus sign, or the minus sign and plus sign. So you basically you do uh, the, the the right one makes it bigger and the left one makes it smaller. Uh, so that way I don't have to uh, do it in Photoshop. And also on my tablet, I can actually um, do it on the tablet as a function key. And later on in, in a video, uh, I will actually show you guys how I set up my Wacom tablet if you don't, if you decide to purchase one of your own. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm, gonna hold the, I'm gonna hold the Alt button down to uh, basically erase away um, the areas that I don't want selected. So I'm gonna hold the Alt button down and I'm just gonna just erase away because I don't want this affected by um, the steps that I'm going to do. All right, so let's get kind of down, a little bit down here. And like I say, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just kind of just giving you guys an idea of how to mask away the selection. So we're going to go back to the magic wand, get in this area right here a little bit. Let's go back, Command Z. And let's go back to quick selection. Oops, let's see, oops. All right. So we're going to just get up in here. It's a little bit, it's not even perfect. All right. So now that we have that done, what we're going to do, we're going to come to filter. We're going to come to noise and we're going to choose median. Now I typically use median um, other than Gaussian blur because it gives me a better um, effect of what I want. 
And so when we do this, if you bump this all the way up to like 100%, you're gonna see the, you're gonna see that it basically smooths out the, the background um, a lot. So we don't want it to be like that much. Uh, we kind of want it down maybe, let's try like about 50% or so and see how it looks. We still, we don't want it to be completely gone away, but we just want enough. So let's go up to about 60 and see what we get. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then what we're gonna do, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of noise back into the image so it doesn't look too smooth because we don't want it to be completely smooth uh, just a little bit. And also I forgot to select this part right here, um, but it's no big deal. Uh, you will basically get the gist of exactly what I'm doing. So to add noise back, we go to filter, we go to noise, and we're gonna go to add noise. And I typically stay around uh, 4% um, or so, 3%. I don't want too much in there. I just kind of want it to all like blend in together. So we're gonna hit okay on that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a, a layer mask. That way it separates that and then we're gonna invert it. So we're gonna invert, which is command I to invert. So this is on a white layer and we want it to be black. So remember black hides white reveals. So we want to command I, and now basically it goes back to where it used to be. So if I command I again, it'll invert it back again. Command I goes back like this. We're going to take, so now that we're on a black, now that we're on a black layer, we want to use white to reveal what is hidden. So we're going to do this at maybe, let's say, Let's do it 100%, and then we'll just bring this down if we have to. So if I want to erase away this floor, instead of using the clone stamp tool or the healing brush, all I have to do is pretty much just paint in what I don't what, what I want hidden. And of course, we'll clean this up a little bit um, in, a, in a little bit. But if I know I'll notice that this is a little bit too much noise for my liking. Um, maybe I should have put it down to about 2% or so, maybe even 1% would have been better. Maybe 1%. Matter of fact, let's do that. Let's um, Alt Option, I mean Alt Option, Command Z, um, as you know, basically just goes backwards. So we're going to go back to my selection where we added a noise, okay? And I'm debating on whether I want to add the noise first and then do a letter, but yeah, let's do that. So I'll go to filter, noise, and then add noise again, and we're going to, let's do 1% and see what we get. So I like 1%. 1% seems pretty good. So we hit OK, and again, you do your quick selection. I'm sorry, your, uh, layer, uh, your layer mask, and we're going to Command-I. And then we're going to do our brush at 100%, white brush, and we're going to just paint in. And that basically will remove the scuff marks and the dirt from the floor. Now, of course, if, you, if your floor is a little bit worse than that, um, you might want to bump up your, your, your median a little bit. But uh, for this image, I don't have to go so high. So we're going to do this. Let's get in a little bit. Okay, and so we're going to do the background. So we're going to do and all we're doing is basically just painting around the image uh, where the selection. So because it's selection, because it is a selection, it won't affect the actual um, image of him because this is basically we're working on the selection itself. But what this is basically doing is it's basically softening up everything. Now, in this image, you typically wouldn't want it to be this smooth because of the type of clothing that he has on is kind of rugged and more, uh, more masculine. So you don't want it to be too smooth. Um, but for just Photoshop purposes and training purposes, 
this is to show you guys how to actually um, do this so it's a lot easier. Okay. So, so far, we, this is what we had before. So let's zoom all the way in and see what we got. And then this is after. So you see how we kind of cleaned up the floor. It didn't take us a lot of time. Um, usually, if we had done it this way, Command-J to duplicate the layer, um, turn this layer off. If we took the um, patch tool, we have to do this, do a lot of this, moving and doing this. Um, and this, you know, this is a, is a, is a function that you can do, uh, but it kind of takes up a little bit of time and then you have to go back. Um, I mean, if you have time to do this and you're not doing a lot of batch images, um, by all means, you can do it this way. Uh, but if you are doing batch images, like with this image, I had to do 180 images of this look. Um, so it took me uh, some time to actually um, to do this. So I needed a quick fix, I mean, a quick way to actually edit these photos without spending a lot of time on it. So if you're doing that, um, my suggestion would be to just do a median layer and then basically just smooth out this, this, this background. If you want to, you can, you can bring the, the fill down a little bit so you can still have a little bit of texture in it or you can keep it up, it's, it's your preference. And you still can keep the, you still have the shadow in here. You still have the, the background of where it kind of folded down. Um, so it's not looking like he's floating in midair, um, but it still shows that he's, um, that, that he's actually there. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys this other way that I do my selection versus doing it by uh, the magic wand or the quick selection. So the other way that I do this is I use color range. Um, so we're going to Command J, and we're going to go to Filter. I'm sorry. We're going to go to Select Color Range. Color Range basically will, um, you pick the color that you want for the image, and then what it'll do, it'll select that image itself. Now, we, in this image, we might get a little bit of his clothing because the gray area is a little bit dark, is kind of close to his black and maybe in the shadow area. Um, so with this one, it takes a little bit more time. But what you want to do, you want to make sure that sample color is selected. You want to make sure that localized color cluster is on and that you want to click on the plus eyedropper here. And what happens is when we click in this gray area, you're going to notice in this square, right now it's black, and we want to choose selection. You're going to notice that it's going to basically select all of the area that is basically gray. So when we click right here and we bring this fuzziness up, you see now that everything that basically we picked is now going to change. So I want to say I want to pick this color, this color, this color here. I want to pick all these colors because I want this is what I want in the selection. The only thing that I don't want selected is his clothing and himself. So like I say, this is going to pick out a lot of this is going to pick out a lot of a little bit of his clothing. So what you do is you bring your fuzziness down because everything that, like I said before, everything that's in black is going to hide. Everything that's in white is going to reveal. So we, want, we basically want his entire clothing and his skin to be black. Now that's not going to happen because the gray and the black are kind of um, matching a little bit and in, within the shadows. So we're going to try to get this as close as we possibly can um, to it. So we're going to, in these areas right here, where it has these little strips and the lines, we want to select those areas because we want to get as much um, as possible in this selection. So we're going to hit OK, and we're going to see what we get. So if you notice, it still selected a little bit of his, um, his eyes and, and his clothing. It didn't really get this area over here that much. Um, so in this image, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use color range. Uh, I think Magic Wand would be probably the best um, image, uh, I mean, the best tool to use for this image. But if you had an image where the color is different, where it's, um, where it's white, a white background with blue or red, something that, is, um, that stands out more, the color stands out more, then you would use 
that um, that tool, that color range tool um, for that image. So for this image, we're gonna uh, we're gonna scrap this tool for this image, and we're gonna basically go with using the magic wand. I think the magic wand was the best the best tool uh, for this. So there you have it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial for Tech Talk Tuesday for uh, for uh, week number two, episode two. Um, so if you have any questions, please um, comment on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you'd like, you can send me an email at contact at AntoineMaxwellPhotography.com. Um, I'll add everything in the bottom of my YouTube channel on this video, um, but you can definitely um, subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, email me. I respond uh, fairly quickly. Um, so I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you next week uh, for Tech Talk Tuesday for Episode 3. Y'all have a great one, and take it easy.